What is up guys, Max here, and today we'll be learning how to make your footage cinematic fast. As you can see with a few color grading techniques and some simple tricks in Premiere Pro, you can make your footage pop, look cinematic, almost like a movie, relatively quickly. So let's get started. And a quick shout out to Videoblocks for sponsoring this video. Not a bad deal those guys got going on over there, so you might want to check them out. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and as you can see, we have some before and afters of the footage. A little fade effect to make it look cool and dramatic. But overall, there's not too much going on in this footage to make it look cinematic, but you can clearly see some black bars and color grading. But first things first, we need footage to make look cinematic in the first place. So that's why I've teamed up with Videoblocks today to bring that footage to you. So real quick, go to videoblocks.com slash YouTube or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get seven days of Videoblocks for free. And what's really great about Videoblocks, it's one of the largest stock footage libraries in the world with over three million clips. And as someone myself who sells stock footage, this is a great place to upload your own content and also grab stuff for your own projects. They have footage, backgrounds, and After Effects templates that you can use for all of your video content. And because it's unlimited downloads, you can just jump right in and go for it. And to top that all off, this includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. And as an artist myself who sells stock footage, it's really, really great when people download the stuff because I get a cut of that. And you can too if you start making stock footage. All the clips we'll download today come with a royalty-free agreement so you can't get hit with copyright claims. And once you hit that link in the description, you'll get seven days of free access to video blocks all for free. So... Now, since we're back in Premiere Pro, we need this footage that we used in this to start editing and creating the cinematic look that we see here. So we're going to jump back over to Videoblocks. But to note, this is not a requirement. You don't have to use the Videoblocks footage. You can use your own footage in your own projects. But we're going to use this footage today. So after you've signed up with Videoblocks and you're on the home page, we're going to click Footage and we're going to click Aerial. Now, it's super easy to download footage here. So let's find the exact footage that was in the tutorial and start downloading. And if you're having trouble finding the footage that I'm finding right now, click the other links down in the description to download the footage directly. One of the pieces of footage we used was this aerial shot of New York. We're going to click Download. We're going to grab this HD MP4 and click Download. Boom, it's going to prompt me to save my file. Click Save. And right there is what makes video blocks really easy. You just download the footage. There's no checkout process, nothing like that. Once you're here, you're allowed to download stuff. Now that we have our New York footage, we're going to click All on Categories, and we're going to scroll down until we see our other footage we need. This is another one that we need. That's the trees in the background. We're going to click Download, HD MP4, Download one more time, and boom, download this footage. We're going to scroll down, find some other stuff that we know. This is the uh, time-lapse nature landscape, which is on the All Categories and Video Blocks. Click Download, download this footage. One more, here's the waves rolling over the ocean rocks which is that last piece of footage we're using in the tutorial. Super easy to find quickly in video blocks. The top rated stuff is right here. So we can just quickly download it. Oh, there's something that looks kind of matrixy if you have a matrix project. So that's also pretty easy. Now, so we have all of our footage here. We can um, open up our little folder here and we can see that we have this nice few pieces of stock footage that we can use in our tutorial. So as easy as that in just a couple of minutes, we have the stock footage with our free trial video blocks. So let's jump back to Premiere Pro. Boom, here we are, and let's get started. So I'm gonna open up that folder on my computer, and we're gonna just kinda jump back and drag in this folder into our project bin. I called it New Stock, drop it into here. So once we have all of our footage in here, we're gonna highlight everything, right click, and do New Sequence from Clip. Now, the first thing, that I would do to make this footage look cinematic is drop black bars on top of the footage. Now, there's two ways to do this, inside of Premiere Pro and outside of Premiere Pro. The first way is super easy. What we're going to do is go to our project bin, click New Adjustment Layer, drop it onto our project. Let's call it Bars first. Drop it onto our project. Squeeze it out all the way across the entire thing. We're going to go our effect panel inside of Premiere Pro. Now, if you don't see your effect panel inside of Premiere Pro, it's really easy to find. Go to Window, Effects. 
pops open this new little panel. You can dock it anywhere you want, doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna type crop in the search bar. Just type crop. Drag crop onto your new adjustment layer, which is the bars layer we just created, and click that, and then go to effect controls for this layer. Now, if you don't see effect controls, same process. The panel's not there. We're gonna go to window, and then effect controls right there. Inside of effect controls we have a couple of different things. Motion, opacity, and now crop because we added that effect to the bars. So what we're going to do is take the top and type 10%. And now take the bottom and type 10%. Now instantly we have this black bar effect inside of Premiere Pro that is kind of cool and really useful. All of our footage looks a little more cinematic. It's squeezed like you see in a movie theater or when you put a DVD into the DVD player as a kid and it was formatted to fit your screen. <laughs> and you see the black bars on your TV. Now, the second way to do this is, a, in my opinion, a little more time-consuming and tasking, but easier in the long run. So what we did in a previous tutorial was create black bars in Photoshop and created these PNGs that we can drag and drop onto our footage. Now I have two folders open here, 4K cinema bars and 1080p cinema bars. Inside of this is just straight up black bars as you can see here. And what I'll do is just drag and drop one of these cinema bars into my project. Now these are all widescreen standards that I've created previously. And if you really like these a lot, feel free to download this pack of cinema bars in the description below. It's completely free, have fun. Yeah, it's just a gift from me to you. So I'm going to drag this 240 by 1 widescreen standard bar into my project. I'm going to delete the adjustment layer we made before. No big deal. Keep it if you like it. You don't have to use the PNG. But I'm going to drag this PNG right onto our project, and we're going to drag it out. Now, I do it this way because it's just a lot faster than going in, making an adjustment layer, and then adding a crop 10% on both ends. That's a couple more steps than I want to do every single time I make a video. So dragging in this PNG is a lot faster and easier for me. So once we have that in here, I might actually take the PNG and take the scale in our effect controls and scale it up a little bit to make the bars a little smaller. As you can see, if we scale it up, it makes them a little smaller, and you have a little bit of control here on how big you want them to be. Exactly. So now that we're here, we are ready to color correct our footage to make it look more cinematic. What we're going to use today to color correct this footage is the Lumetri color panel inside of Premiere Pro. Now if you don't see your color panel, which should already be there, we're going to go to Window, as always, and Lumetri, Lumetri Color. Opens this up right here and we can see, if we drag it and paint it to the side here, we have a nice set of effects here that we can go through and affect our footage. We have basic color correction, creative, curves, color wheels, HSL secondary and vignette. Now we're not going to use all of these today because I don't think some of them are too necessary. So the main ones we'll use today is the basic correction, creative curves, and color wheels. So let's jump back over to our new sequence and get started with the waves. We're going to drag down the shadows, drag down the blacks, um, bring up the contrast a little bit, maybe bring up the exposure a little bit, and increase our saturation just by a hair. It's kind of cool. Now we're going to go to creative, click on that, and we're going to ping over on these creative looks. Just click over on your arrows. You can see through these. I like this right here. This Fuji F125 Kodak look. We're going to click on this. Just click it. It applies it. And we're going to bring the intensity down a lot. Go back to our basic correction. Maybe bring our shadows down a little more. And instantly, we have this nice looking effect on our footage that makes it look more like a movie in my opinion. There. Now. What if you're color correcting your footage in your movie and you don't want to do this every single time on top of a clip? Where you have to go click on this clip and just use the basic correction every time. You could just copy and paste Lumetri Color on a new clip. So uh, Control C or Command C to copy Lumetri Color and then click on your next clip and then Command V or Control V depending on whether you're a Mac or PC and paste it. It, it works. It brightens the footage. It makes it look nicer. But what we could do is something a lot smarter and a lot more efficient inside of Premiere Pro. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new adjustment layer with new item in our project panel, adjustment layer. Then click OK and drag this adjustment layer onto our footage. I might even take this adjustment layer and change the label color. Let's change it to, I don't know, mango. So we can kind of see it inside of our project. What we'll do is we'll grab the Lumetri color on this clip right here. Uh, copy this effect, delete it off of our footage, and paste it to the adjustment layer. Now what that does, it just affects the footage below it. So anything below this adjustment layer gets affected, just like the adjustment layer we did a little bit ago for bars. Super, super simple. So what we can do is just drag this, drag this adjustment layer out, and it now affects this footage as well. 
If we drag it out even more, it affects this footage as well. Drag it out even more, and it affects this footage as well. Now let's say you're super, super happy with this color effect you've created with Lumetri Color, and you want to save this color as a preset for later use in other projects. So we have our adjustment layer here, we have our Lumetri Color here affecting this adjustment layer. What we're going to do is right click Lumetri Color and click Save Preset. Opens up a little dialog box, we call this whatever we want, let's call this Tutorial Color, and then click OK. So bada boom, bada bang, let's say Lumetri Color is gone, we go to our effects, we type tut color, there's one of our presets, we drag it onto our adjustment layer, and boom, there is our color applied from the last one. Now you can do this for any clip, doesn't matter, delete adjustment layer, tut color, boom, tut color, boom. So now you know how to save presets with color effects going forward. Now, depending on what film you're working on or what video project, you may not want this exact effect on everything. So what we're going to do is click C on our keyboard and cut this adjustment layer up into different segments. And we will delete the Lumetri color on the, each one of these just because we're kind of blank slate in here and we want to make unique looks for each of them. So, next up is this landscape. We'll go back to the Lumetri color panel and we'll start editing. Well, I'm going to drag the temperature down to blue a little bit. Or blue a lot. That's kind of nice. Bring the saturation up. Bring our contrast up. Bring our shadows down. Bring our exposure up just a little bit. Not very much. Maybe contrast down a little bit. Bring our blacks down and our highlights up. Maybe we'll bring the temperature back up a little bit. Now we'll jump over to creative and click through these one more time. Find something that we find interesting that we can apply to our footage. I think this Kodak 5205 Fuji 3510 looks good by Adobe. It's built into Premiere. Click on this. We'll bring the intensity down a little bit bring the faded film up a little bit. We'll click on curves, which opens up this panel right here, and you have this white line, which is your full curve. We're gonna give, it, we're gonna give this footage an S curve. So click right here, down on the bottom of the line, kind of around right here, bring this down a little bit, go up here, click on here, and bring it up right here, which creates this nice S curve of shadow, or shadow and highlight. So if we turn it on and off, we can see it affects the shadows a little bit, affects the highlights a little bit. So to top this footage off, the last thing we'll do is click on our color wheels and we'll grab our shadow here, our, we'll grab the shadows, midtone, and highlights and we'll change these just a little bit to give it a more unique look. We'll take our shadows and bring them down to this teal bluish color down here. We'll bring our midtones a little bit up to orange, bring our highlights up to orange a little bit. Now if we turn this on and off, we can see that inside the shadows it went from dark to a little bit blue over here. So it gives us a nice unique stylized look, more Hollywood in my opinion. Not exactly what they do, but it's pretty close. So now if you're upset with the way that you set your color wheels here and you want to reset them back to zero, really simple, just double click on this little plus, resets it to zero, resets it to zero, resets it to zero. So for New York, let's go to basic correction. We will bring the contrast up, bring the brightness up, and bring the shadows down. Real quick, super simple. We'll go to Creative, jump over on the Creative Look. This Fuji Eterna 250D looks pretty nice. Let's click on this. The intensity is probably a little too much for us. Um, we'll go back to Basic Correction and bring the saturation down because some films look kind of desaturated. And then go to Curves, leave it alone, and go to Color Wheels. Let's bring the shadows back down to blue. The midtones up to orange. Well, let's leave the midtones alone. Basic correction, bring the saturation down a little more. Now this looks kind of cool. It's nice and, uh, in my opinion, a little more cinematic than it was before. Um, turn the Lumetri color on and off to see what we did. Just like that. Now last bit of footage here. This one should be a lot easier because there's not much going on in the sky here. What we're going to do is grab the adjustment layer right here. We're going to jump over to creative right away and jump over on our LUTs. Click over on the arrow until we find something that really pops for us. Cine space looks really good. Let's click on this. Instantly, the little bright lights are popping out. Looks pretty cool. Let's keep it right here. Now what we're going to do is just jump over to our basic correction and bring the temperature down. Which instantly takes our darks, our all this, and changes it to this nice cool looking blue color. Which is a direct match to our last piece of footage. It looks very, very similar. Now that's exactly what we wanted, but let's make this a little more teal. What we'll do is go to our color wheels and bring our shadows down to teal. And 
and instantly it looks a little more teal to my in my opinion you can see it kind of pops a little more so that's it that is how you make your footage look a little more cinematic fairly quickly I think drag a layer on change the color a little bit but as always I am Max feel free to like this video and also hit that subscribe button turn on notifications find out exactly when I post a video as soon as it goes live but thank you for watching thank you for all the warm comments and good vibes we have on this channel and without further ado I'll catch you guys in the next video peace